It was the sort of place that asked for plush carbon and India rubber plants, but instead gets glass brick, cornice lighting, three-cornered glass tables, and a general air of having been redecorated by a parolee from a nut house. Its color scheme was bile green, lindsey poultice brown, sidewalk gray, and monkey bottom blue. It was about as restful as a split lip. I walked over to the elevator and hit four. The fourth floor was cool gray, the carpet thick. I rang the bell at apartment 412, and it chimed softly inside. The door was swung open instantly. The beautiful, deep, dark eyes looked at me, and the red, red mouth smiled at me. Black slacks and a flame-colored shirt open to the midriff, just like last night. Amigo, she said softly. She put her arms out. I took hold of her wrists and I brought them together and made her palms touch. I played pat a cake with her for a moment. The expression in her eyes was languorous and fiery at the same time. I let go of her wrists, closed the door with my elbow, and slid past her. It was like the very first time. You are carrying insurance on those, I said, touching one. It was real enough. The nipple was as hard as a ruby. She went into her joyous laugh. You like my little apartment, here we go. Don't say little apartment, that sounds like a whore. I didn't even look at her, I didn't want to look at her. I sat down on the Davenport and rubbed a hand across my forehead. She sat down and looked at me with those grave, dark eyes. Why did you kill him, I asked her. She stood up and she came close to me, smiling again. For two reasons, amigo. He was more than a little crazy, and at the end he would have killed me. And the other reason is none of this, absolutely none of it, was for the money. It was for love. I started to laugh in her face, but I didn't. She was dead serious. It was out of this world. No matter how many lovers a woman may have, she said softly, there's always one she cannot bear to lose to another woman especially her own little sister. I just stared into her lovely dark eyes. I believe you, I said at last, but you know that either his associates will send someone to kill you, or I may have to turn you over to the cops. Kiss me, amigo, good God. What, just because I killed a man, she said, or is it because I cannot do a damn thing about it without destroying my little sister utterly and finally? Last night, she proved she was willing to destroy herself. That hurt, didn't it? You are in love with her, she said. I said slowly, that would be kind of silly. I could sit in the dark, I could hold her hands, but for how long? In a little while, she would drift off into a haze of glamour, expensive clothes, and froth, and unreality and muted sex. I wanted more than that. I moved toward the door without putting my back to her. She might have shot me, but I didn't really expect a slug. I thought she'd like better me having me the way I was, not being able to do a damn thing about any of it. I looked back as I opened the door, slim, dark and lovely, and smiling, reeking with sex, utterly beyond the moral laws of this or any other world I could imagine. She was one for the books, all right. I went out quietly. Very softly, her voice came to me as I closed the door. Amigo, I have liked you very much. It is too bad. I shut the door. As the elevator opened at the lobby, a man stood there waiting for it. He was tall and thin, and his hat was pulled down low of his eyes. I walked across to the desk and banged on the bell. Give me the phone, I said. I dialed the police. This is Philip Marlowe, a private detective. I'm at the Chateau de Bercy Apartments, corner of Franklin and Gerard. A woman named Dolores Gonzalez is connected to a murder that is being investigated by Lieutenants French and Giordano. She's in apartment 412 right now. They came fast, but not fast enough. Perhaps I ought to have stopped the man. Perhaps I had a hunch what he would do, and I deliberately let him do it. Sometimes when I'm low, I try to reason it out, but it gets too complicated. The whole damn case was that way. When they cracked the door, he was sitting on the couch, holding her pressed against his heart. His eyes were blind, and there was a bloody foam on his lips. He had bitten through his tongue, under her left breast, and tight against the flame-colored blouse lay the silver handle of a knife. The 
handle was in the shape of a naked woman. The eyes of Miss Dolores Gonzalez were half open, and on her lips was the dim ghost of a provocative smile. On her, it looked good. The ambulance in turn looked at her and said, I guess somebody's lost a dream. She lost a lot more than a dream, I said. And I bent over and I closed her eyes.